deep in the remote and unspoiled suburbs. They need landscaping? <laughs> they need landscaping? The crew must dig deep. Who's got two thumbs and likes digging in clay? This guy. To help create an outdoor love nest for Tanya. Watch the mother's gonna come and whack us in the head in a minute. For dirty business, see what one good whack will do. Holy Look cow, this looks amazing! amazing. So we're heading out to see Tanya. She moved from the city out to the suburbs, and I can pretty much guarantee it'll be a blank slate. We can do whatever we want, which is great, because well, there's nothing in the way. I like when nothing's in my way. We've seen what can be done, and we're very excited to be shown ideas that will blow our minds away. No pressure here. Hey, Kennedy, how are you? Good, 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 good. It's amazing, you know, the first impression of that yard, there wasn't one. It was just like, I hate it. It's just a big patch of grass. There's nothing there. Wow, this place is wide open. We need to bring in some privacy and a way more elegant way to access all of this space from inside the house. Somewhere we can step outside, enjoy morning coffee on the weekends. Is there any preference between materials? Maybe? I think in our minds, we always thought of a wood deck. We definitely want an area for our son to run in and play in. Is there a style that you want to stay with? Something that is more clean lined. Okay. And we don't want to stick out like right. a sore thumb, but right. we also don't want to blend right in. But you want us to maintain a little bit of that kind of real urban kind of feeling to this yard? It's just going to be really, really stylish. We would like some vegetable planting, herb garden, that type of thing. It's good because, I mean, full sun, you can do it. Mm -hmm. He's got so many options available to him that he might not know which way to go because it is a big blank slate. That's a landscaper's dream. And Lauren is here to help make that dream a reality. You know what? It's a landscape fantasy land. Lauren always sees the big picture. Look at all the opportunities for work. They need landscaping. They need landscaping. They need landscaping. They need landscaping. It's actually cool because they don't have a house directly behind them. They, just, uh, this, they have this corridor of a view all the way down. Six. Six feet. The grades are going to be an issue. Look at the way it slopes down there and goes down into the property line really quite steeply. So we're going to have to do a lot of yeah, a lot of grades for this for sure. Perfect. What is that? Two foot one for a suburban garden. I mean, it's pretty big. When we put all the stuff in it, you're like, wow, it instantly feels bigger. It's true. It always feels bigger after we're done. With such a big yard and so many options, I'd like to hear what my partners think. They want that urban kind of feel in the backyard. They want kind of slick, modern kind of feeling to it. This is what the site looks like. There is nothing here. It's all totally flat. It is completely not flat. It's like seven feet from here to the finished floor elevation. And so some of the costs are gonna be hidden in retaining walls and yeah. things. If we do a retaining wall around this, it has to be 18 inches back from the property line. Because it's so open and sun's an issue, which way is the southern exposure? It so is full sun, just basically yeah. full sun. So shade for people, not for so much for plant material. Right. They want good. a vegetable garden? Oh, a vegetable garden. You know, before in the 70s, everybody did it. 80s, 90s, it disappeared. It feels like it's coming back now, huge. Yeah. This is one of these places where they have a big side yard here, so I think we can take advantage of that. That would be really cool. And this faces west, so yeah. this is gonna be a really hot, sunny area here. Trees, we have to bring them in because nothing's gonna say garden more than a couple of huge trees. Bring them. I love I that, though. This is, right. Talk about, this is the best opportunity in the world to blow a client's mind because there's nothing. <laughs> mind blowing, you got that right. The primary goal, to make the most of Tanya's space. So this is a great area for uh, bringing into the backyard. Yep. There's a lot of room here to kind of play with too, so. Might be fun to sort of do something where we wrap the deck around that side of the house, and then she can uh, view this part of the garden and the other two sides as well. And then they'll spill down if they're entertaining into other areas. Or yeah, we'll give, or an, and, and you know, and they have a play. kid, right? So yeah. we have to leave a lot of the space open for playing. It's gonna be a challenge for us to make it sassy and without being too flashy for, for the area. Have fun doing this one, man. Thank you. Hmm, I'm thinking now. Have fun. We're taking the city and going back out to the suburbs to see Tanya with her new drawing of her backyard. It's gonna be good. Hope she loves it. It's pretty windy, Kennedy. One second. I think I need more rocks. So what we wanna do is we wanted to maximize the side yard and it was a perfect location to do the vegetable garden. And when you walk down through it, you get to where this elevated deck is. 
the shape of the awning above this is like more of an organic kind of feel to it. And this will just have this kind of really little bit of whimsy in it that just has this kind of stretched fabric that that is what's going to be your cover over your deck. Oh, sounds we're gonna, interesting. We're going to take this whole slope here and kind of lower it. This whole area and all the way down here is going to be level. And then open play area for the kids. We're thinking this is where the dinner kind of area is. OK. And we're going to do an arbor above it. Like an outdoor dining room. Yeah. From what I see, you definitely hit on uh, all of our requirements. Mm -hmm. Looks exciting. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. Mother Nature may have other ideas, but we're not going to let a cold snap stop us. Yesterday was a beautiful day out. Today is just flurries. <laughs> Well, we're anticipating it's gonna be a little bit slow and tedious at first, but once we get through this, it should be smooth sailing. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and likes digging in clay? This guy. Digging here is horrendous, horrible, horrible digging. With the design that we proposed, we've leveled off all this hill because it's, it's useless right now. To get the grades we're after, we'll cut away from the high spot near the house and push it to the back and corners. To keep it well drained, we're installing a weeping bed around the property's edge. We'll hold back the newly raised area with a retaining wall. This is the type of soil that we hate the most. It's red clay, it sticks to everything. Basically, it's like concrete. Thank God it hasn't been raining, because if it rained one day, we wouldn't be here for like seven. A second retaining wall will create a new upper patio and dining area. For this, we're using poured concrete. Our twist, to make simple, cheap concrete look like wood. You'll see. When you're doing design and you keep kind of pushing to try and do different things, not 100% sure it's always gonna work out, but you gotta try. What do you think, Chris? The green's gonna work out or what? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. Oh man, this is sweet. I love this. From sweet to sweeter. We're trying something a little different to shade Tanya's deck. Can I have one of those sails? You know, the sails? I love those sails. I think those are so up and coming, man. We found a sailcloth product that can be cut into any shape you like. Still gives shade, still lets light through. But we're trying to balance because it's our opportunity with sunlight to do it. Like yeah, exactly. Cool perennials. Right on screenery. You know, it's shaded everywhere. Screenery and greenery. It's going to be beautiful, practical, and different, all right, once we get there, because this could happen. If it rained one day, we wouldn't be here for like seven. Well, it rained, and we haven't got seven days. Kevin's going to have to improvise to finish the post holes for our arbor. And I'm anxious to see how our new wood green concrete retaining wall turns out. <laughs> Kennedy can sell ketchup popsicles to a woman in white gloves. <laughs> Not sure if the design for the retaining wall is exactly a ketchup popsicle. At least I hope it goes down better. Once you get it cleaned up and look at it, it's part of the whole job, it'll look okay. Supposedly when it dries, that wood grain will pop out a bit more. This is the desired effect of the, of the wall Kennedy's looking for. If the whole thing turns out like that, we're laughing. That's laughing and singing in the rain. Despite the mucky weather, we push on, adding stone steps to the retaining wall and erecting and cementing the post for the arbor. While that happens, Lauren and I zero in on greening up this wasteland. Some opinions are not welcome. I know these are gonna be sunburst honey locusts, I know that for sure. And they have a yellow hue, the new growth. Yeah. There's no trees in this whole backyard right now, and then the instant impact with some big large trees that come in. You know? These I know are gonna be columnar trees. We just have yeah. to decide what type of columnar trees. Like, well, down here, I think we sort of want to block the view off. I think something like a crab apple might work well here. I think it's this. Because this is really 50 feet long. Grasses? I think we so. got so much well, sunlight here. What, they'll keep a perfect form. So maiden grass, which is a common name, of course. Uh, Northern lights, that'd be great for there. Yeah, because as a variegated leaf, and you need the full sun to keep the, the variegated coloring. So we need some space for the vegetables. Yeah, that'll be here. But I know you were saying something about getting roses in here. Might be nice to have a nice sunny spot for the roses maybe adjacent to the vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. Carpet roses, the one they grow to about this high, and just this. That's this... kind of cool. Nice choice of plants. Yeah, it's I'm looking beautiful. forward to this. Me too. The sun is back, and the work at Tanya's is going full speed. 
I always feel that vertical elements are where you should splurge. And since the plants take up a lot of our budget, we'll save money installing these man-made pavers. The light gray color really complements the tan brick of the house. The horizontal elements are what have me concerned right now. Seems one of our retaining walls is, well, not retaining. Here's why. The big problem is just the excessive machine work that uh, basically the tires and the ruts and all the soft clay actually push the, the wall over. So um, we're just reinforcing it. Once it's all sawed and stuff, I don't want to uh, come back and dig up sod. Now is the time to get it right. So basically we gotta go back and uh, add some Tyvax into it. Some things you should always steer clear of. <laughs> Bless you. Honey locust. Honey locust. And these and are this the, is sunburst. These are the sunburst variety. variety. Yeah. Which it's so vibrant, man. It's a great choice. I love how chartreuse green it gets in the uh, in the sunshine. We have them coming right out of the gravel, the fine gravel. So it's just yes. the trees sticking right out of the gravel. You, actually, that won't be a problem at all. It's all what's in the soil underneath. So you can just have a. a I know what you're talking about, like a topical gravel. So it looks like these are growing out of gravel. Yeah. Anybody can do it. The trees will grow really well there. Very European. Yeah. That is exactly what it's, it's like. That's the feeling. And uh, dappled shade. It's a great one to allow filtering sunlight below. It's not a dense shade. I know the color is great. I want this willow. Oh, that's quite different. Dappled willow. Oh, yeah. And this Love color them. is spectacular, man. The, yeah. And I want to do it down the side mm -hmm. of their house where the walkway is. So it kind of tones the brick down a little bit. Yeah. It's going to look fantastic, man. James, this is what I'm looking for. Simisifuga. Simisifuga. It can handle a little bit more shade. And at Tanya's place, this is going to go right up against the house where the house is continually casting the shade on them. So we're doing it kind of exactly like this. So to get this whole long kind of planting yeah, plan going it. on. I think I'll order it. these for her. Yeah, sweet. Let's beautiful. do it. Another beautiful sunny day in Tanya's wide open backyard. You can really see the need for a shade system. Only question now is, what color works best? It's gonna look so cool, man. Well, they, well, the next door neighbor already wants one. They're gonna do really well. Yeah. It's gonna be a new trend. I think we're gonna go with two colors in the end. It's gonna uh, look really I nice. Think it's gonna be black and tan. Uh, yeah. I think the reason these colors work is because if you do a shocking color or whatever, it's fun for a weekend. You know if what? You have to look at it all the time. It'll drive you crazy. The black and tan will look great with the Ipe deck. Ipe is a beautiful coffee-colored South American wood. It's harder than stone and will last forever. The unique grain will give Tanya's deck a real modern urban appeal. The great thing about these is if you prune them, the new growth is that pink and white. Incredible looking. Man. And if you let them go, they will get kind of scraggly, but then they lose their color sometimes too, so it's best to so continue to whack them back. Right. This is lovely, I love it. Kind of well, this is it, right? Like, you can see down here, you can see the whole backyard from here. This is like the power point right here. Look at that, eh? instantly the hedge starts creating this block in privacy. You know, good fences make good neighbors, but good hedging makes even better neighbors. Yeah. Because right. a fence, just a fence is kind of cold, but with this nice columnar tree, it's going to be very beautiful. There's a note on the post over here. To the fence, guys, please watch out for this tree. It has a bird nest in it. It's amazing, isn't it? Watch the mother's gonna come and whack us in the head in a minute. Sweet. No. I'm convinced these changes are going to knock our client's socks off. But the concrete wall might take a little more convincing. It kind of looks cool, the near lines like that all the way down. It's almost so subtle you don't notice it, but I think once the grass and everything goes in, it'll be really appreciated over time. Well, think of hanging out here with you know, the kids playing right here. I love it. Backyard's gone through a huge change, and it's much more enjoyable to look out at nature. It's great to be able to come out to the deck now. Once the shades come in, we'll be jumping for joy. Jumping for joy? We think she'll be over the moon. I didn't realize it was this transparent. Uh, it's very breathable, so it cools down the area underneath it. Right. And also for the wind resistance as well. It lets, it lets wind through quite a bit. So we went with black, and that's yep. the tan. This is called desert sand. Yep. These two go really well together. Is this UV protection? This color here is up to, uh, has 99% UV protection, which is the same as 50, 50 plus sunscreen. What's the UV on the desert sand? 96%. They're so unobtrusive too, eh? There's no bar in the middle. It doesn't exactly. take up any room or make a distraction when you're talking to people on the... You're gonna be doing a million of these. 
I'm feeling super confident now. There's no better time to have our designer over for a look. This is uh, obviously loungy. It's unbelievable. And that was just to shade this whole area because it's so blistering hot in this backyard. That works beautifully. Yeah. What's the story with the family? You know, they moved from the city and they came to the suburbs and they want to maintain that kind of urban quality to it. Stylish, yeah, I think stylish. maybe is what you're going for. Yes. Like when you think of downtown, stylish. Something at the end of this long strip would be so amazing. And have a sitting area here where all you see is this great view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, you know, they want that little bit of funk in here, you know? Like they want this kind of just different feeling back here. Yeah. So I think looking for something unique is a good idea, yeah. whether it's a fireplace or water feature, or even tables to frame Art space. Art piece, whatever. Art piece. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, no, that's great. Okay, I'll leave it in your hands. Excellent. Now it's a race to the finish line. The color scheme for this area is black and tan. Yes. So I'm going to play with that. Or maybe a hit of a, just one red cushion in the midst of all the Beautiful. tan and black. And walking down the stairs, it's a really nice large space with the grass and the patio. So nice big table for under the arbor. Okay. I would love to get a bright red carpet just to add a punch cool. over there. Hallway. Also, when you have a huge hallway, in this case, it's an outdoor hallway right. with it huge honkin sculpture at the end of it. It focuses your attention down at the end. And if you look back down the hallway at the other end, yep. something like an outdoor bed. Yep. Something so like this. So nice. That's basically one, two, three, four areas. Okay. Excellent. That so it? that's it. I can't wait to see the sculpture. Thanks, Kennedy. Thanks for Beautiful. I really love the fact that you use the side of the garden for planting uh, kitchen gardens. It's great use of space, yeah. James. It is, yeah. Looks like it's going to be potatoes wow. soon. What do we got here? Wow, wow. look at this. Side of the garden. Beautiful. Look at that. Tanya's place. Holy look cow, this looks amazing. This looks I like a hotel, it. man. Before we started, the garden would be best described as nothing. Now, it would be a backyard oasis. You know, you're just staring at a blank page going, OK. Why would we divide the space up this way? Typically, we end the decks at the edge of the house like yeah. this. But we stuck it out because oh. you get to enjoy all down the oh. side of the house, too, because they have so much room down there. He's provided us with ideas that we didn't even know existed. For example, the sails. We had to put in the sails for the sun. This back here was just like the desert out here. It was just brutal. But you know what? They got a little bit of a curve on each one of the uh, sides. That makes them kind of sexy. Ooh, well, now you're what? talking. The feeling is incredible underneath those. And those locusts are going to create the perfect shade because the leaves are so small. And it's going to canopy even the dinner area. It's a nice, cozy feeling with the trees around us. Well, the steps, eh? Nice and wide. Look, two people can walk down yeah, at the same you time. glide down these stairs. My son loves the design. He's able to go up and down the stairs without any problems. He loves being able to run on the patio area. He also loves playing with all this well. We're not so happy about that, but he is. You would never know this is a big grading issue at this property, because right now it's all quite leveled, but there's walls that you don't really see. Notice he's concrete too, he's a nice form. They wanted something a little more urban. I was born and raised in the city and have only been living in the suburbs for the last two years. I wanted to bring some of those city elements here. Trying to maintain that urban kind of feeling is just a very kind of linear feeling to it, not these kind of curvy beds. All the plantings are kind of linear like that. I really like the uh, blocks of planting too, I think they're wonderful. Gardens change so dramatically year after year. These grasses are going to be six, seven feet high. When you sit down for dinner there, you're going to block out this whole lower area. So the less you can see in a garden, the more interested it actually becomes because it's not all given away right away. Right? you got to see this, this window down here. Oh, let's go check it out, man, for sure. Check. The intention was for kids to have open lawn area, but as an adult, you come down and you're like, it's kind of a great viewing point. You can actually create this just in your own yard, you know, just by narrowing the, the scope a little bit and then putting a major, major object at the end. When I walk out, I feel happy, peaceful, like I have a place that suits my style, so it accomplishes everything. I think it's worked. I think I we think pulled, pulled this it off, man. Anyway. Very cool. Okay, let's get back to the urban. It's 100 miles away from civilization, but you know what? It works. No, you know, back to plants. Can you tell why they're called Bleeding Heart? 
I have absolutely no idea, Kennedy, why they would be called Bleeding Hearts. Oh, you picked the flower! Shh! What is that? Hide that! The guy's coming! <laughs>